uh, Patriots games or other sporting things for sure. You'll see him on the mothership, I'm sure. But he will be missed in the game, for sure. Uh, I enjoyed watching Big Poppy. I enjoyed his career there in Boston. And uh, good for him. Good for his 20 years. Good for everything he meant to everybody. And good for his accomplishments. Alright, the bad, the bad this week has got to be the Vikings fan that got stabbed seven times for his blow-up doll by Green Bay Packers fan. Now, when I say blow up doll, I'm not saying nothing raunchy. I'm not, take your head out the gutter. Stop, it's just stop. It's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about those big 8 foot, 10 foot blow up doll looking things you can put in your front yard to show your fandom. It's a doll. It's a blow up doll. What else do you call it? Fan, lawn art, lawn decoration. No, it, it blows up. It looks like a doll. It's a blow up doll. Well, this, this Minnesota Vikings fan lives in Wisconsin, reps his team like he should do, had one of these big dumb things in his front yard, melee ensues with a Packers fan, dude ends up with seven cuts. Check out the Facebook page if you haven't seen it yet, Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. We got it posted there. You can see all the wounds, read the story, but come on, man. That's ridiculous. That's what, I mean, earlier in the year we were talking about how all the LA Ram fans at every game had started getting in fights. Now you see it at a bunch of other stadiums. Now you got this nonsense where because you got a big inflatable in your front yard, you're going to get stabbed for it over some fan nonsense? Come on, man. That's enough of that. Move on. And the ugly. I'm sorry, the ugly for me this week was that Monday night football game. That game was ugly. That was ugly for everybody but Roberto Aguayo. Because he got real happy and might have got some of his confidence back that he had at Florida State kicking. He's had a horrible start to his career in the NFL for a guy that couldn't miss in college. And he got to walk away with a game winning field goal. So good for him, but the rest of the game, that was ugly. Ugly. Nobody had a good game that night. Nobody shined in that game. Carolina was down, they came back, were up, and then they lose. Now they didn't get burned and torched like they did against Atlanta. Cam Newton wasn't in. It, I don't care if Cam Newton was riding a scooter and he's in the concussion program. Good for Cam Newton. He wasn't riding a motorcycle up and down hills. He was on a, a three-wheeled scooter. If he fell and hit his head, they had other issues. So get over that story. That story's dumb. I agree with Ron Rivera. He's an adult. So he was on a scooter. Big whoop de doo The fact is, that team is playing... The opposite of what they did last season. Yes, they're missing some pieces, but that defensive line's not getting off like everybody thought they would. Ely's not building on his Super Bowl performance. Charles Johnson looks old. Thomas Davis is looking old. And because the defensive line's not getting off like they did last year, Keekley's not being able to run around and stay clean and make plays like he did. We know the issues the secondary's having, and it's not just because Josh Norman's gone and you pay for what you get. This is a team that I've told you last year they got through because they didn't beat themselves. This year, they're not able to do that same game plan and that same way of play. They're just not doing it yet. Same team, pretty much. Every team uses, loses players. Some teams adapt. Carolina did not. So that's that. Let's move on to the Thursday night football game. I just want to get these last two things in before we go. Um, Thursday night football. We got color rush uniforms, right? All right, color rush uniforms. You got the Chargers. I believe there's a blue. Um, the Broncos are going to be in this orange uni with the new colors, but the, the classic 
design on the helmet with the D and the horse. For me, I like the Bronco solid blue unis that they wear every now and then now. I thought that was a great look. But you know, these orange ones, this new color rush unit for the Broncos, I like the helmet. I like the, the new colors with the throwback scheme. So you, you got the color rush unis on Thursday night football. Broncos are without Kubiak. Another health scare for Kubiak. Another trip to the hospital. This time it's migraines. He's taking the week off. Special teams Joe coach Joe DeCamillis is going to be the coach Thursday night for him, stepping in. We'll have to see. We'll have to see going on further in the season how this is going to affect Kubiak's health. We all know he had that minor stroke when he was down there in Houston. That was a scary moment. And now this. So is, it a, is, it, is this a sign of things to come? Is the health fading? Is the stress too much for him? Does he need to relinquish some control? Hmm. I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe it's just one of those things. Maybe it just happened and we know about it because he's in the spotlight. Trevor Simeon should be starting this week. Virgil Green should be back. Donald Stevenson, Stevenson looks like he should be back. So the offensive line should play a little better for the Broncos instead of making everybody look great. Uh, Paxton Lynch, you know, he looked like a rookie last week. What do you want me to say? What should anybody say? He was a rookie. Not all rookies are going to come in and play like Dak Prescott and Carson Wentz have. Most of them are going to come in and play like Paxton Lynch did. And I'm sick of hearing the talk, well, he played in a spread system. He's never done this. Yes, he did. He played in a system out of, you know, under center in high school. We've heard here locally Cecil Lammy, Lammy talk about it. So get over that. If he was talented enough and they're coaching him, he can play out of, you know, the system. You just call the plays that he's good at, that he can run, that he can handle. And as he can handle more, you add those in. Stop giving him built-in excuses because he's a high draft pick. He's athletic, and they picked him for a reason. Now Simeon's going to start this week. He's the starter. He earned it, not just in training camp, but he's been there since April. He went through it with everybody last year, even though he only took one snap and he was taking a knee. But I agree with the guys that have been talking about it this week. It's different for him. He was there. They feel like they know him. They feel like he ride and died with them. So he's earned it. He's showed it. And if that shoulder, if he can keep himself safe, the Broncos are going to keep him upright and come up with a game plan this week. The running game can get off. They can stop the run somehow because their run defense was pitiful against Atlanta. They exposed themselves, and now everybody's going to try and do the same thing against them. Even the Chargers. You're going to see Benjamin doing all kinds of little short routes, trying to get on those linebackers. Melvin Gordon, they're going to try and get him off big this week. Not just scoring touchdowns, but they're going to try and get him a 100, 150 yard game. Joey Bosa, hey, you missed a bunch of games. You missed the off season. Your mama talked for you. You came back last week against the Raiders, had two sacks. Maybe you will do something, young man. Maybe you will. We'll see. Maybe you win against the Raiders' offensive line that's really not that great and a team that's really led by their quarterback and you just got off for a little bit because they didn't expect anything from you. They had no film on you. Nobody knows what to expect from him. I don't expect him to have two sacks against the Broncos. I really don't. And you know, the Chargers, they've had a ton of injuries, but they're fighting. They're in every game. You got, I mean, that's a team with heart. That coming from somewhere. That's coming from the head coach. That's coming from Phillip Rivers. That's coming from, you know, that's a team. They, that's a brotherhood down there. For, for you to have as many injuries as they had, to not have a full squad, to not have one of the most talented rosters, but you're in every game, even if you, you know, crumble in the fourth quarter or somewhere in the second half. You know, that's a team that hopefully at the end of the season doesn't go, man, 
if we would adjust and they could start turning the corner maybe not tomorrow Broncos fans for y'all but uh, I would like to see Philip Rivers end his career on a higher note than just having it wasted with subpar talent pretty much the whole time down there in San Diego I mean Tomlinson retired Antonio Gates got old Vincent Jackson left town the defense has holes in it so you're left with what you have it's rough uh, so Thursday night football I got the Broncos beating the Chargers staying atop the AFC West and we'll see how Oakland does this weekend on the other side of the break we will get real hey guys the NFL is back it's time to win some cash playing fantasy football the dirtcannon.com is a local company that has your back. They have produced over 60% winners on FanDuel, DraftKings, and now even Yahoo. The dirtcannon.com will help you build, play, and win. Build a better team with the dirtcannon.com. Use promo code RDST and get $5 off forever and try the silver membership this week for free. Visit the dirtcannon.com. All right, let's get real about something real quick. Real, real fast. Is Julio Jones athletic? Yes. Is he fast as a mother? Yes. Is he one of the top five to ten receivers in the NFL? Okay, I'll give you that. But everybody who's been riding his jock strap over the last week since he put up 300 yards... And talking about how great he is. And he's the best and blah, blah, blah. He's going to beat the records. Get over it. This is a man who had to put up a 300-yard game to take over the NFL receiving yardage lead by six yards over Detroit's Marvin Jones. And yeah, I'm a Lions fan, so I'm going to bring that up. But this is a receiver who has all the talent, but is very inconsistent. He can go out and put up a 300-yard game. And in the next game, he can put up 27 yards. He can disappear. He doesn't play with heart unless he's doing big plays. Then he gets excited. He's having fun. He's not a guy who's going to go out there and fight for you. He doesn't have that thing that Roddy White had when he was down there. He's a front runner. He's overrated. He's highly athletic. I respect his game. I respect his ability. I respect what he can do in this game when he's playing at his top level. I don't feel like you get that out of Julio Jones each and every week, each and every play. I think you can get Julio Jones by head, head by being a little physical with him. By double covering him. By rubbing him when he comes off the line. Not giving him a clean release. Roughing him up at the end of a tackle. I think he's overrated. I think when he puts up these big games, the hype machine likes to get excited and go, woo woo, look what we got here, boys. He's the greatest. He's good. He's very good. But he's not better than A.J. Green. He's not better than Antonio Brown right now. In fact, he's pretty much on the same level as T.Y. Hilton. Both are good, very good, but too inconsistent and disappear at times. And that's real talk. You know what else is real talk? Real talk is my love for my fans, for what I'm doing here, for the growth we're making, for my official fantasy partner, DirtCannon.com. Check out our Facebook page, Real Deal Sports Talk with KP. Follow us on Twitter. Real Deal KVP, and you know we 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 love the donations, appreciate the love in the donations, and check out our GoFundMe page as we're trying to raise money to get some better equipment here for Real Deal Sports Talk. And until next time, everybody, just be real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.